All right, what's going on, everybody? Hello, hello. Welcome back to another Sam.gov Bids Live episode number 42 today. We're representing what's going on, uh, where we walk through small business solicitations together on Sam.gov. And we answer your questions along the way so that you too can start bidding and winning contracts on Sam.gov for your small businesses. Today, we're going to be doing something a little different. Now, it's been probably about a month since I've done one of these episodes and uh, kind of just taking a little bit of feel to things. I'm not sure how much things will change in the future, but today we're, we're kind of just hanging out. I'm taking a little bit more relaxed, wanting to just have a little bit more fun. And let me know in the chat if you guys are, are up for having some, some fun, some relaxed fun. Uh, it's the only way to have it, right? So I'm gonna do something a little bit different today. Uh, our last episode, episode 41, if you didn't catch it, definitely check it out. We went a little bit deeper, not like deep, deep, but we played around with like outlining proposal responses. If you follow these episodes, typically we will go through like four or five bids. We'll review the bids. We'll kind of highlight certain key areas. Um, and then we'll move on to the next bid. That way we can kind of get, like, give you the, the main takeaways. On the last episode, we went a little bit deeper um, and then we moved things over to like a Word doc and we started playing around to kind of show you, illustrate, demonstrate for you a little bit more like what an outline like would look like instead of like talking about all the stuff we kind of like put a little bit of structure to it. So today I was thinking it could be a little fun to to uh, try to include chat GBT into some of that. So, I mean, I don't think chat GPT is obviously like it's not going anywhere and it's just it's having um, a lot of disruption and displacement in so many industries. And I think it would be fun for uh, at least do an episode to kind of like see what we can get out of this. So really what I'd like to do is just take it a step further, like what we did on that previous episode that I just explained and then see what like if I don't know, I don't know if it's going to work, but like if and what we can get out of chat GPT to try to like, okay, look at a bid and then like, let's tee up a little bit of an outline and then let's go to chat GPT to try and give us like our sections, like give us more meat, right? And that's gonna be more surrounding like the technical side of things because past performance and price, I don't really expect chat GPT is gonna really be able to do much for us there. But uh, so that's kind of my thoughts um, and let's we'll kind of see how it goes. I don't know if it'll be a success or not. Um, I think it'll just be fun either way. And that's the goal. So that's what makes it a success. Uh, so let's see. Um, if you are live on with us live, let me know which state you're representing in the chat. And if this is your first Sam Nico Bids Live you're catching, also let us know this is your first live so we can uh, represent you as well. Um, now, as you're doing that, there's one thing, one thing that's kind of important, kind of a big deal, kind of super new, Maybe one or two of you know what I'm talking about that um, I want to show you and then we'll go ahead and kind of go full swing into the episode. And that is we just launched a brand new community. The community, it's it's open to everybody. Uh, the primary focus of the community, and I'm going to share my screen, is, well, the community name is GovCon Startup. Let me just go ahead and show you. Okay. That's better. GovCon Startup. Okay. This is from school. If you're familiar with school, uh, S-K-O-O-L. Um, we started a new GovCon Startup community. My goal for today's live is to get some of you over into this community. Again, it's open to everybody, but our primary focus for this, I'll just read you our mission. This is a space for GovCon Startups to sharpen their vision for their business in the federal space. So the, again, the purpose of this community is really to kind of like address and tackle that problem that happens before you start bidding. Because so many of you know that I'm the bidding guy. I focus on bids, Sam back up bids, start bidding and winning, right? But what I'm seeing is so many of you are kind of like rushing to start doing that. And then you're hitting a wall, you're hitting a problem. So my hope and my mission for this community is to help kind of get you guys straightened out. Um, so if, if you are new, brand new, maybe you're registered, or maybe you're not registered, it's, it's cool for everybody. Even those of you that are more advanced, that's great too. Um, come over and join our uh, community if you're wanting to... Uh, be part of the community and also engage right now we're kind of doing like one open meeting a week in here via zoom and it's to have conversations around your startup that way we can kind of get you on the right track and the right path so that when you are ready to start bidding you're not having to start you're like you're not having to go backwards and, and redo stuff hopefully that makes sense um if you're saying hey how do i like how do i join there's going to be a, a link right below 
uh, the description of this video. Um, otherwise, it's just school.com slash GovCon startup. You can find us there. And then also make sure that you um, download the school app on your phone because uh, school is it's an amazing platform to use. I'm definitely trying to get away from Facebook, but I'm dipping my, my toes in the water. And uh, it's got great functionality on your phone. So Apple, Android, like you name it. Um, you can check that all there. And I hope to see some of you bounce over to our community, uh, maybe join while you're on the, the stream today here. So that's my little uh, plug, but honestly, the group is fire. The community is already fire and you're gonna get a lot out of it. So I um, highly encourage that. So let's go ahead and see what's going on in the chat, everybody. And then we're off to the races, essentially. Let's see. I'm not going to answer questions just yet. Good to see you, uh, Cruz True Tax. Good to see you. Thanks for hanging out with us. Um, definitely, definitely, Dave Andrews. Uh, JOB wasn't a good fit, so now I have time to find my passion. Let's go. Hey, awesome, man. Good to see you, uh, Dave. I think I saw a comment like a while back saying that you couldn't make it because of the uh, the timing of your work. So uh, I'm, I'm guessing that's actually what you're referring to. That's, I mean, ho hopefully everything's okay though. Um, job transitions are 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 pain painful so um crumb snatcher uh what's up my husband and i have had our our company mcbest trucking located in uh, virginia for the past six years now and just getting into govcon so this is great to connect with others in the contracting space yeah definitely and it's even greater to, to connect inside the community i just showed you um definitely uh, vela barnes uh vela you may actually be in our community if unless there's I, I don't know. I could be getting that wrong, but good morning, um, beautiful people. Yes, thank you for bringing the beauty to our uh, our community here. Love it. Um, what else? What else we got going on? You guys are just chatting. That's cool. Uh, Puerto Penasco six zero two. Any way we can connect you by emails for questions? Uh, come come to the community. Um, I, I'm answering questions in there again. Uh, highly recommend it for everybody. And lots of like. It's not just about me. It's not top down. It's like you all connecting with each other, which is what you're doing in the, the comments right now. Like there's a lot of that going on. Terry Davis, uh, Houston, Texas. Good to see you. Also, um, Arizona first time for Puerto Penasco. Hopefully I'm saying that properly. Crumb Snatchers out of Virginia as well. Thank you, guys. We've got Kelly Fees, Virginia. First live session. Let's go. Good to see you, Kelly. Also hanging out with us from LinkedIn. So definitely uh, points for LinkedIn, uh, Team LinkedIn. Um, Advantage Property Group, first live located in Georgia. Mary Butler, first live from Columbia. Awesome, awesome. Good to see you guys. Uh, I'm registering as we speak. I <laughs> love it. Hey, probably focus more on registering and less on the show if that's the case. Uh, Ali is, um, Giza country is Egypt. Wow, good to see you, Ali. Representing all over the world and SB out of St. Croix. All right, guys, as I said, if you just joined, um, we're doing things a little bit different today. My goal is to have some fun and just kind of hang out with you all. I have my uh, Tapo Chico uh, <laughs> sparkling water, which I've quickly become a fan of. And today what we're doing a little bit differently is we're reviewing less and we're going more into outlining and maybe seeing uh, how chat GPT can help us to formulate responses to an outline that we put together. So let me go ahead and share my screen and here we go. So I did start looking at one because I need to put a little bit more time into this so that I'm not like messing with you all for 15 minutes trying to find something. So this bid is medical records review services for the army, July, due do July 25th. This is WOSB set aside. 621111 uh, Office of Physicians NAICS code. And this place performance is going to be out of East over South Carolina. Again, medical records review services. So they're giving us, uh, we're seeing the pricing cleanse. And they're seeing base option period 12 each. So 12 each for the base. So that's likely going to be 12 is representative likely of each month. And then we have option period one, two, three, and four. So base plus five with pricing by the month, right? And then that aggregates throughout these different cleanse. Proposal submission instructions. 
Anything important? Proposal format. Okay, so what do we have here? And this is in the listing description, right? So this is probably gonna be repeated, but that's okay. It's a bit easier to read in here sometimes. Okay, Times New Roman font. Okay, all proposals shall be labeled with solicitation number as such, cool, as well as the name, address, phone number, et cetera. All volumes shall be electronic files. Yeah, yeah. Okay, still waiting for it. <clears throat> okay, I'm seeing something down here. Offer shall prepare the proposal set forth in table one, proposal organization table and table two. We'll see what that looks like. Okay, so table one, proposal organization, volume, section, copies, page limit, one. So cover letter, proposal summary, OCI. Okay, I'm thinking this is gonna be a bit more easy to read inside the, yeah, okay. Inside the actual solicitation, but okay. They're saying cover letter, one page, technical capability, 10 pages, past performance, up to five pages, price proposal, five pages. And then they have this proposal, uh, just file name, name matrix. So some naming for those files as well. Proposal summary, technical capability. This is literally how they want you to name the documents. I'm sorry, I can go ahead and zoom in a tiny bit. Proposal summary dot doc, technical past performance. Okay, so they want the documents actually named this way. This could be a bit of a tripwire. If you name it something different and it's hard for them to find, they could technically uh, say that it didn't exist because it wasn't named the right thing if they wanted to be real sticklers about it. Uh, something to be aware of, okay. Um, proposal quotes shall be structured as the following. So volume one, proposal summary shall include this information, like the date, the name, cage code, all that basic stuff. Technical, okay, so then volume two. So we've uh, we have volume one, volume two, and then I already see down here volume three. So there are volume four. Volume four. Okay, so we know kind of intuitively we're working with like four volumes. And this is all from the listing description, not typically the way that we approach it, but uh, it's just teamy up here. So I'm just going through it anyways. And then we'll get into the solicitation and we'll find the same thing, I'm sure. Which I think we should just do at this point before it gets too crazy. So we have a, an approved solicitation doc here. We have a revised statement of work here. And then we have provisions and clauses. Clauses. So I'm going to open up the solicitation doc. Which is only nine pages. So this is actually pretty straightforward. And maybe we'll have time. I don't know. I don't know if we'll have time to do two of these. But we'll kind of just see like what chat GPT is going to do for us. Like, I don't know. Um, Okay, so the formatting on this is kind of non-existent, but we're seeing pricing cleanse here. Got it. Proposal submission instructions. This is some of what we probably just went through. Yes, it is because we're seeing it follow the same stuff. So then the proposal format, hopefully the formatting is a bit easier. And then proposal content organizations. Okay. So this is that table they were telling us, so we can read this a little bit better. Uh, factor one, factor two, factor three. They were saying volumes, um, but that's for the, the naming, file naming. So I suppose, I mean, it is volume here as well. Okay, so volume one, two, three, four. It's just factor one, two, three, cover letter. Okay, we got it, that's fine. That's not too too bad. And then this is just what you name the file. So we're really not going to put too much focus on this table right now. I don't want it to confuse us. This is the naming of the files. We're really going to focus on this table one. Okay. Volumes one, two, three, four, and then cover letter, factor one, factor two, factor three. And then we're even seeing those same page limits that we touched on a minute ago, one page, 10 pages, five pages, five pages. So we're much more validated with those crumbs we're kind of putting together. This is now kind of starting to come together as a puzzle feeling fairly, uh, confident in uh, our proposal approach to that okay but for the interest of comprehensiveness let's just see what else there is 
again, we did see some of this, a volume one shall include. So we did see, oh man, why, hmm. Why is my screen not showing for you guys? That's strange. Like you guys, you can't see my, um, you can see my screen, but it's showing sam.gov instead of showing my, my word docs. Okay, so I may have, let me just see if I can fix this really fast. Rather realize it now than, okay. Okay, I think I clicked the wrong, I think I was sharing the browser that which was on my screen instead of the entire screen, which shows anything that's on my screen. So that kind of sucks. <laughs> okay. But I'll show you the table. That's what's important. That's what you missed. Uh, was the table. I'll zoom in a little bit. This is the table. You're probably like, Derek, what's going on? Okay. Actually, let me just tee you. Okay. So this is where we started. Okay. That's why I said the formatting's not great. We're not hit with the SF1449 form. Um, these are the pricing clins. Okay. Uh, not per se what we usually see. And then this is like the information that we just read through in the listing page. Uh, so the submission instructions, as we hit on coming down to the proposal format that we talked about proposal content and organization. And then this is the table. Okay. So this is what you need to see. This is what I was talking about. I'll zoom in a little bit more for you. My bad, my bad. Okay. So again, volume one, two, three, and four and cover letter, factor one, technical, factor two, past performance, factor three, price, and then pages one, 10, five, and five. For those of you who are listening only, you're probably like, all right, I'm gonna fast forward. Oh my God, he's gonna like restate everything. I promise I'll make it quicker. Um, so yeah, this is, this is what is giving us the confidence for how we're responding. Or maybe you guys like the, the repetition. Maybe I went through it too fast and the repetition is good. This is the second table that was, I was saying was focusing on the naming conventions. And we're not going to pay as much uh, attention to this for the proposal preparation. This would be part of the um, review and submission piece and just uh, the doc organization side of things to name your files properly. Okay. Here there is the, what they're saying shall be included in volume one, which is the, the name, address, all that good stuff, cage code. Volume two is what they're saying is the technical capability. And so again, as we said earlier, what did we say? We said, we're probably going to try to rely on chat GPT for the technical side of things. Cause it's probably not going to be that helpful for the pricing or the past performance to be fair. So this technical piece that I'm showing you here, it doesn't seem like there's much. So I don't know how much we'll lean on chat GPT, but we will try. Okay. And then the past performance piece is there, which is pretty you know, straightforward. And then this volume four for pricing is going to be those pricing cleanse that they gave us. And like that's the end of the document. So there's only nine pages. This is not too terribly hard. And just to keep reminding ourselves, what are we looking at? This is medical records review services because we haven't even gotten to the same amount of work yet. So you could be like, okay, what is this proposal even for? That's what it's for. So where we left off was coming back to this te uh, technical capability volume two. So it says the technical capability section of the proposal shall present relevant info, articulating the offer's proposed approach to meeting the PWS requirements. This section shall clearly demonstrate the offer's understanding by providing a clear description of the proposed approach to performing the work. And that's pretty like generic wording. The offer's description shall include a clear description of all processes and procedures employed. The offer shall provide relevant experience um, in performing proposed processes and procedures. So that's getting a little bit into what could be asked for in past performance. So how you would include that, I guess you could describe work that you had done on previous projects as your experience, and then point to the past performance that you're going to present in volume three as more of, again, the reference and more of those project details. That's kind of what comes to mind for an approach to this for me. 
The section shall not include any pricing data. Okay. And then past performance, how many do they want? Up to three, uh, submit information up to three years, no more than five years of recent contracts. Is it saying a number, a number, how many do they want? One, two, three, do they not care? It says these may include foreign, federal, state, local, and private industries. Okay. It does not have to be direct federal government past performance. It is not the chicken and the egg thing when it comes to past performance, as it seems, guys. A lot of you get hung up on that. Okay. Yep. They want recent and relevant past performance. And we talk about that a lot on the channel as well. It says at least one of the past performance references that offers submits shall include recent relevant of the same or similar requirements as described in this PWS. So they're saying they want at least one of them to be very similar to this medical records review contract. And then the others may not be like as much. Okay. So this is kind of what we're working with. So all I want to do now at this point is what I'm going to do, what our path going forward is I do want to look at the statement of work, come back down. I'm going to look at the statement of work, uh, here, uh, where is it here? Revised PWS. So I want to see what we can gather from that. And then I'm going to put an outline together to match this. And then we're going to pull, we're going to use chat GPT to try to have some fun to see if we can, what we can get from this, for this technical piece that I was just showing you. And then kind of just put it all together. It's not going to be a complete proposal or anything. You're like, we're not doing pricing or anything like that, but like kind of just see what like Bob Ross, what picture can we paint? Kind of using this and, and to help us i'm also going to be pulling on um, our proposal builder docs so like this is inside of bid team this is like our, our library of documents so uh like those of you who are in bid team if anybody in bid team is watching this you know what i'm talking about but um these are just some standard templated documents that we pull from that are like part of winning proposals that work so that you don't have to um reinvent the wheel so we have this is a like some colors on our palette right and then we also have chat GPT here, which uh, I'm going to start a new chat on, which I, I was trying to mess around with it. I think we're going to get something good because I didn't want to waste your all's time. Um, so that's, but we'll, we'll, we're going to do it fresh here. So that's what we're looking like for kind of like the rest of the episode. I'm going to go ahead and just check in with the chat really fast. And then we'll embark on those next steps. So stick around if that sounds like something you want to do. And if you have joined our community, be, like from this live, like from these last 25 minutes, let me know in the chat. If you joined, if you hopped over, if you clicked on the link below this video, or if you found us over on school and you have requested to join, let me know because uh, I do want to get as many of you who are going to be a good fit for the, the, the community, meaning you're trying to learn GovCon and you're in the early stage and you have some questions, definitely join the community. So let me know in the chat if you joined since uh, viewing today. And then we'll see what else we have going on in the chat. We have Jennifer White hanging out with us today out of North Carolina. Good to see you. Craig Morris. I'm Detroit, Michigan, HR consulting and training industry. Good to see you, Craig. Um, thanks for hanging out with us. Definitely my uh, old stomping grounds in the Detroit area for sure. Tina Smart. Good afternoon. I'm new to government contracting and I'm from Indiana. Welcome, Tina, as well. And JJ just now tuning in. What's up, Derek? What's up, JJ? Uh, Jimmy from North Carolina representing MNH United. I have a feeling, JJ, you may be in our our, our brand new community. Um, unless there, I know there's other JJs out there, but I have a feeling it might be you hanging out with us. Uh, and awesome, uh, Kelly says she just joined the community. Love it, love it. Double points for the LinkedIn uh, team, LinkedIn, right there. <laughs> cool. All right, guys. So let's go ahead and uh, look at the statement of work. That's what I promised next. So we'll close out a Chat GPT for a second, and let's look at our PWS just to kind of like be fair and see if there's anything that's going to be helpful for us in our technical okie dokie. So this is 25 pages statement of work. <laughs> the statement of work is longer than the actual solicitation. So that's funny. JJ says, yes, it's me from school. Nice. I had a feeling. Good stuff. So yeah, medical records review. They're going to give us some information. I'm looking for um, specific tasks. They're kind of reflecting our base plus four option years here. So five-year contract. 
Let's see those specific tasks and duties. Are they going to, are they going to give it to us? They might not. They it may not be laid out as I was hoping it would be. So we'll have to go over it again. So we got background. Cat cards. Come on, where? So the contractor shall maintain records of all approved and rejected applications. Contractor shall manage requests for new or renewal CACs. Contractor shall return issued CACs, failure to comply. Da, 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 da. Gotta give me more than that. Otherwise, it's not much of a statement of work. Report any occurrences of lost keys. <laughs> Come on, guys. Special quals. Contractor shall meet all the specs as specified below. Maybe they'll give us something good below. I didn't see it the first time. Um, potential offers need to be advised with the Army National Guard. Process is different from the active duty. Uh, the government will not provide training time for the below quals. And one of those is saying the contractor, by the way, shall have been certified that they have Army flight surgeon experience and have attended training and have been credentialed by the U.S. Army Aeromedical Center. So pretty important stuff. Pretty credentialed stuff, we'll say. A contractor or sub shall have a minimum of three years experience. Okay, so these are better the requirements. But what is the work? What do they need to do? If we don't find it, that's okay. I still think we can work with. So I still think we have something to work with. And then we're into definitions. Okay, maybe medical record review services. Is this it? Yeah, I think this is it. All right. Uh, the National Guard has identified this service as a key function. Contractor, employee, or sub shall employ, employee shall be responsible for providing an in depth review and analysis of the soldier's medical records to determine if the soldier meets the medical retention standards as outlined. The results of the medical retention and analysis shall be presented to uh, orally in an informal setting to the state. Okay. These are actually good contracts, guys. I haven't done this contract, but I've done um, case management contracts. If you like to do staffing, if you like to, um, I even talked to a few bid team members about this. I think Chanel, she's, I don't know if she's on or if she's going to be watching this. Chanel, this was one of the contracts I was talking to you about back in the day, if you happen to see this. Um, okay. But yeah, it's, it's the medical review for the soldiers. That's what I wanted validation on. And it is the case, but that's kind of all that they give us. So it's not overly a lot of information, even though this is 25 pages, as you can see, it was like focused on a couple paragraphs. Somewhat helpful. I'm not sure how somewhat. So I kind of just want to kick things in gear now for the interest of time. So we've read through, uh, let's say we skimmed through, um, these two docs, the solicitation and the statement of work, as well as sam.gov listing description. Let's go ahead and try to put something together, okay? Um, I said we're gonna have a little bit of fun and be a little bit different today, so I am committed to doing that. So I want to start with, actually, no. I think what we could do, I think where we could start is, I told you we have our proposal builder docs. Again, this is like a library we have inside a bid team. So I, I need like a template. I don't wanna start with a blank sheet of paper. Um, so let me just start with kind of like an outline template and we're not going to use all of it, but we can, um, like change things around. So in this particular template, we're just kind of hit with, you know, this is all, this is all like basic for a reason because the government doesn't like all the glitz and glamor inside of proposals. If you don't know that, uh, you want to keep it pretty straight and easy to navigate, easy to find, not a lot of color, stuff like that. So we're kind of hit with a cover page, just part of this outline. We have a cover letter here. 
Um, we do have a defaulted table of contents. And then, um, okay, yeah, we also have a federal contracting profile with dummy information. Gives contracting all those nice highlights of what your business is. And then we just have some placeholders for technical, past performance, and price. This is just a standard outline which you need to change because you don't know. Every bid is different. Um, this is why I don't like really like giving these out or anything because you guys, you just take them as, uh, I mean... <laughs> I, although I appreciate it, you kind of take them as is and you don't change them or customize them like you're supposed to. You need to customize anything. There's no such thing as a pure, like, un, un needing to be changed bid template. Template, everything needs to be changed. But okay, so this is kind of what we're already working with, with getting teed up. The goal with using uh, some sort of outline template like this is so that you aren't starting with a blank sheet of paper. So what do we know about what we need in our response? Okay, so we got that from our proposal builder docs. Let's look at our solicitation. And I got too many documents pulled up here, but that's PWS, close that out for now. This is just blank, close that out. That's our outline. Here's our solicitation and here's our sections. So volume, uh, volume one shall include, this is your basic info. So this basic info is going to already be captured in our outline. Like we have a cover page and a cover letter here. So they're asking for, you know, address, cage code, all that sort of stuff. Like that's all covered here. So you definitely would want to like double check with a fine tooth comb, but it's basic, basic info, right? So for now we're going to say like, okay, we kind of got that teed up for us. That's volume one. Volume two is the technical capability. Technical capability. Again, what did they ask for us here specifically? This section shall demonstrate the offer's understanding uh, by providing a clear description of the proposed approach to performing the work. Okay, that doesn't, this says nothing. It just says give us an approach. And this approach shall include a description to include a clear um, understanding of all processes and procedures employed. So what and like, that's it. Like, this is a paragraph, usually technical volume two that usually they give us like a lot, right? What we could do is I kind of just wrote like some sort of basic thing. I'm going to change it a little bit. Um, I'm going to take proposal out and this is where I'm going to put this into chat GPT. Okay. So this is chat GPT time, provide a technical response to, pro to providing medical record review services to include a clear description of all processes and procedures employed. Okay, do you see how I took that straight from the like the requirement? And then I just, on the front, I put provide a technical response to providing medical record review services because that's, again, what this is. God, I swear these tabs are gonna be the death of me. Medical record review services here, right? So I, I spent like a couple minutes to put that together. I mean, if that's cheating, then I cheated, but uh, I wanted to try to be at least somewhat efficient. So what I want to do is, and as I just changed this, I took out the proposal word and every word, it affects the output. So this will be just as new to me as it is to you guys. I want to come over to chat GPT. Hopefully it's not being slow right now because we are live <laughs> and I want to see, give it a minute um, and see what this does for us. So it's definitely writing us something. Okay, looks like it's finished. We have something here. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I'll read like the first few lines here, and then I will like review the outline, and then like we'll see like how good do we think this is. Again, the query that I asked was pro provide a technical response to providing medical review services to include a clear description of all processes and procedures employed. I showed you where I pulled that out for our volume two technical, right? So the response, our medical record review services encompass a comprehensive and meticulous process designed to analyze and evaluate patient medical records for various purposes, such as quality assurance, legal cases, insurance claims, research, and healthcare audits. That may or may not be 
appropriate for National Guard. So like this is obviously going to have to be edited and customized. But a lot of this may be super helpful. The following is detailed description of the processes and procedures we employ. Okay, great. So I love to see that they're using uh, ChatGPT <laughs> is using this uh, prompt that we gave them. And so they're giving us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, basically sections. Number one, intake and scoping, which includes initial consultation and then a scope definition. Based on the client's needs, we define the scope of the medical record review, including the type of records, time frame, and key areas of focus. Um, data collection and security, review team composition, review process, quality assurance, reporting, delivery, and communication. Okay. I don't know per se, because I am not an expert in this industry, if or how close this is, right? So if you're bidding on this contract, you're either self-performing or have some sort of personal or professional working knowledge to vet this or to, to amend this. Or if you're working with like a subcontractor, you can be sharing this language with them to help them work with you on the proposal, which you can do with subs when working with subs to help them um, update to better reflect how the work is actually going to be performed. So you don't want to propose to the government something you're not going to do. But this, I, I hope you see the, the value, because I certainly wish we had this back in the day, of having something to, again, allow you to not have to like start with a blank sheet of paper. Um, or even like, if this is something you do, but you're just not a good, you're good at not good at writing or putting your thoughts down on paper or whatever. And this is like 80% of like what's in your mind. This, this could really be like a godsend, right? In terms of writing the proposal side of things, it's, it's definitely art and a science. I would say using this better questions, get better answers. But for now, like I'm pretty impressed with this. I'm going to go ahead and just as a placeholder now plug this into our technical. And like highlight, because this has to be, this is, this can't be taken verbatim. Okay. I, I say that because people are crazy and they're just going to go and do it. I don't want you to do that. I want you to use this as a tool to help you. So, I mean, that's, that's kind of neat. Like, it's kind of neat saying, okay, we have this outline and now we're starting to plug some sections in, right? So what else can we plug in? Also, um, we do need to update like our naming, right? Because uh, we need to update our volumes. So the technical was volume two. And then they said this proposal summary, which we can go ahead and put up here, I, I will say for now. And this is loose, but those of you who are visual learners or just like to see this stuff, um, it, it certainly gets you in the right ballpark, I would say. Need to take that format again. And we had like a lot of good feedback as well on the last episode where I, I did a lighter version of this. So this would be say volume one. And what did they, what did they call it? Just so that we can, you know, kind of be correct. Proposal Summary Volume 1. So we'll say Proposal Summary. Now we can update our table of contents here. Just have to fix that. But um, yep, we have Volume 1, Volume 2, Volume 3. And then we would need Volume 4 for... Mm, that was one thing that was a little off, right? Because they were saying volume four was like reps and search or something. What was, or or did I just like totally botch that? They wrote somewhere, but yeah, it is volume four is, is the pricing. You guys, you know, this is like totally off the cuff stuff. The goal is to kind of show you what you could be, could be doing, right? I, I'm going to try to not like geek out too much on trying to fix every little detail right now, but you're kind of hopefully getting the idea of the flow and the approach that we're taking with this, even though like it's not perfect. <laughs> okay. So 
just really fighting my OCD really hard. That's all. Beacon. That got bumped because of the thing. And then where is our profile? We can turn that into normal text, which will hopefully take that out. All right, cool. All right, so OCD is calmed. Volumes one, two, three, and four. We made it. So for now, we're leaving this. We got to play with ChatGPT a little bit. Um, for the past performance, we can also plug in some stuff because uh, we're not relying only on ChatGPT because we also have our proposal builder docs. So say we wanted like some uh, proposal, just some proposal layout stuff just to make it really easy. Um, number one, say we'll use like three of them, right? So this gives us some placeholders. You could use this or you could use more of like a table, but uh, just kind of keeping it simple today. And then assuming like you have, you know, you got to have the information ready to go. But this is going to make putting that information easy or say, hey, like you're working with a teammate or you've been doing this as a team of one and you're trying to like, you're trying to delegate or you're trying to have somebody support you. If say, if you can like get them teed up even with this much, like the outline side of things, you can have them go and say like, hey, plug, you know, put this project in, put that project in. You know, I know that my my boss used to do that a lot where she just have like the, the giant 80 inch TV or whatever on the wall. And then there's this team and she's kind of just like saying, you do this, you do this, you do this. And then we're all kind of like dynamically like updating the proposal, working on different sections. So if that's, you know, if you do have a few people or a person that constitutes more of a team, a team more than just one, then you can work in conjunction with like with templates and then using your brain and working with your team to kind of dynamically like get this stuff working all at the same time. Um, eventually you will want to be getting there. It's just going to be um, much more efficient. So for now, if we're kind of like putting the past performance placeholders here, then we kind of got that. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit, just like we're starting to get something. We've got our updated table of contents. Um, we have our volume loose of volume one. We have volume two for the technical approach, which they didn't ask for much. So we'd probably just need to clean this up or add to it, um, volume three, past performance. And then we had now the price, which I believe was those pricing cleanse, which we can probably also extract. But it didn't, I think they just referenced it here. I don't think that they, cool, Mary Butler says she requested to join the community. Awesome. Yeah, guys, join, seriously, like join the, you're missing out if you're not joining. It doesn't cost anything. Um, yeah, it just says volume four provisions and clauses. So not overly helpful there. So what we would do is we would pull the, the pricing table that we saw before. Where did I see that? Am I going crazy? Did we not see a base plus four? I probably just am missing it. Did we not see that inside the solicitation? Let's try base. Okay, I just went too fast. I prefer to take it from here just for formatting purposes. But we could like try to put this into a table. But this is how they're kind of teeing it up for us in a not like nice way. Usually the government just gives us a table. Um, Clin one, base period. And then the 1001, 2001, 3001, 4000 ones are going to reflect those option year, option year one, option year two, option year three, option year four. That's why the base period starts with a zero. Okay. But yeah, like the formatting is just a little messed up here. It looks like, okay, that's better. So we now have our pricing table and they're looking for a price for each CLIN, which we know is 12. So this would be like per month. I mean, probably shouldn't do it there, but it's be per month. And then this would be 
and don't mind the, the X's. They are not representative of a uh, number of decimal points. It's just a placeholder. So this is kind of what filling this out would look like. Okay. So we have this price approach, pass performance. Chat GPT did help us a little bit with the technical approach. I'm curious how good this actually is for some from somebody who actually knows what they're talking about when it comes to medical case review. TOC, I mean, I think this is doesn't need to be updated. That's okay. We do have our cover letter. Now they did say the page limit thing. So like, let's just make sure we are compliant. What do you guys think of this? Let me know uh, in the chat. Like, is this cool? Is this helpful? Is this like not as good as looking at four or five different bids? I mean, we're going more in depth. So, so the cover letter is one page. So this is a cover page and this is a cover letter. They arguably didn't ask for a cover page. So we could make a case for deleting this. And just making sure like all that same information is represented here, which like it, it is. So okay, one page gone. Technical is 10 pages. I do not believe we've exceeded that. We're just like it's pretty short. It's a page and a half. So we're fine with technical. Past performance is five pages. We're fine with that. We're still on one page, but that would get beefed up more than likely if you add in some more information. Price proposal is five pages. So we just have this. If you're wanting to provide, I always tell like my bid team members, um, pricing assumptions or exclusions. If there's something that is unclear or it seems like it's the government's asking for like an option or you expect like your pricing to, to change possibly in the future. So if there's teeth that you need to put into specifically your pricing, you could include um, what those are, whether it's a whole narrative or just, hey, our pricing is pricing is based on like whatever the time period of, you know, 60 days or something. Uh, prices are held firm for 60 days or assumptions are based on like, hey, government, we're assuming that the government's doing X and we're doing Y. If the government wants us to also do X and Y, then this price is subject to change and, and kind of like requoting. It really depends on the bid itself, but that is like, I guess my point is just know that you can do that. Cause I know a lot of you who are, you're bidding your first contracts are like, Ugh, I don't know if I'm bidding it properly. I don't know if it's exactly what they're asking. So feel free to include any sort of gap here. That's what I'm trying to say. Hopefully that helps. And the point of this really was to really just, I mean, this was super quick, right? And this is not like a big response. And that's kind of why we, we did it today so that I could kind of show you volume one, volume two, volume three. So many of you are stuck with the, I'll switch views, stuck with the, the blank sheet of paper, like the blank sheet of paper of death, right? Like, how do I get started? I wanted to showcase to you how to get started and it, how much easier it also is if you have tools, but if you don't have tools, you can still do this. You just kind of got to get started by extracting what the government's asking for, use that to build an outline and then start to plug and shove areas for those outlines the best like that you can, whether you're the expert or you're working with a subcontractor or it's a little bit of both or whatever, you're going to use that Intel to, to build this out. And if you have questions, ask contracting and try to be as confident as possible. And then if you can't, then just don't bid it. You move on to the next one, but you will learn and get better with each and every time. Same with your proposals. Like imagine you're starting again with something like this. Like it's it's okay. And the final version would obviously be a bit more, certainly be a bit more polished, but maybe a bit more robust. I'm not sure, probably more in the technical. And we could go back to the statement of work too and like have it write more technical stuff for us if we want to like 
really hone in on a certain area that maybe we found being repeated in the statement of work. And we really want to like highlight that, um, see what information we can get and then apply that to our own business practices or our subcontractors practices of how the work is actually going to be fulfilled to make sure we're not just putting empty promises in a proposal that it is reflective of what our approach is going to be. Or if we weren't sure what our approach is going to be and we feel that we can use this, then we can also use this to help kind of back into what our, our approach should be right? If we're a bit newer or if we're questioning a few things, it can help guide us, right? Um, so I think that's really kind of like it for for this. I mean, it was fun seeing what chat GPT could do. I could see like doing an episode like this where we just spend the whole thing playing around with chat GPT. But for, for those of you who are wanting to go from like zero to one, you're kind of like wanting to see it. Hopefully like this inspired you a little bit. Hopefully this showed you it doesn't have we like we don't have to make it so hard it doesn't have to be so intimidating and of course this is not a finished product but so once you get started usually you get the momentum rolling usually you can make it to the finish line most get hung up on the start line you don't even like get off the block all right lords says a uh, very helpful awesome um and again mary said requested to join love it uh, Vela says, do you provide the templates? I think I missed that. Templates, these are our bid team templates. So I do provide those, but they are part of our, our bid team, which is our paid um, our paid uh, membership program. Um, cool. Anybody have any other questions about this sort of thing? I'm kind of like, we finished like like five minutes early today, which is okay. But uh, I guess just let me know. Like, did you like this? Would you like to see more use of chat GBT? I feel like the answer would be a resounding yes. Um, but yeah, like, let me know. And if you joined the community, congrats, I'll be getting off of here and I'll go and admit those who joined while we were on. And just in case anybody like doesn't have the link, I'm just going to go ahead and post it for those of you who say like we're unable to or whatever. I'll go ahead and just post this in the chat. Hopefully most of you can access that. So school.com slash govcon startup. And then you can request to join. I'll add you. And it's a open for everybody. So awesome. Nice. I know it feels a little weird because like I feel like we should have done like four or five bids by now. So like I feel a little incomplete not having uh, done a whole like thing. Instead, we just like focused on one today. But I think that is going to do it. Miss Key says school game checking in. Love this info. Awesome. Love to see one of our, our new community members, uh, key. I think be key business solutions, I think if I remember properly. Um, good to see you. So we'll go ahead and call it, guys. Hope you enjoyed this kind of special and, and fun, uh, unique type of episode. DM says, yes, indeed. I think chat GPT will be an effective way to help with the process. Yeah, I, I do too. I don't think it's going anywhere. So I don't think it hurts any of us to start learning how to incorporate this into our, our daily and in our working lives because just getting more familiar with it is going to allow us to become more fluent with it, like another language. And, and we don't want to get left behind. We don't want to be stuck doing things in a way that's tougher than it necessarily has to be. So I think incorporating chat GPT, um, maybe not in every episode, we'll kind of just kind of see as it makes sense. Um, it just seems like a, a tool that we all need to like start using more. So we'll go ahead and wrap it up, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Again, join the community. Like, it doesn't cost you anything. Um, subscribe to the channel, like the video, however you want to do. If you don't want to do any, that's fine too. Um, and we'll see you all in the next one. And we do have a calendar. We have a calendar inside the community. So if you're wanting to like see when we're doing things going live, that's what I'm saying. Like you definitely want to check it out. So hope to see you guys there and we'll see you all in the next one. Take care.